Hi guys, um, so one of you asked for a video on narcissists and religion or narcissism and spirituality, and I'm gonna do my best to cover that topic. Um, so there are some narcissists that will use religion um, as a tool to um, achieve their goals. Not all narcissists um, are religious, but there is a certain type that um, tend to be. And you can see these um, with the covert narcissist. An example would be, um, you know, a, a Catholic priest that is, you know, on the exterior, this incredibly benevolent, kind, altruistic, um, better than gold, good as gold, like a saint, um, practically levitating. And, you know, that's the image that they're sending to the public. And Meanwhile, behind closed doors, you know, the same person could be a pedophile and preying on children in the church. Now, I am not suggesting that all Catholic priests are pedophiles. That is absolutely not at all what I'm suggesting. There's some very, very good, kind-hearted, decent, um, I'm sure, Catholic priests and Christians and Muslims. And I mean, we're not, this is not really about religion. I'm just using this example of how some narcissists will use religion um, for their, you know, evil um, means. So those type, they're like the wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, and, and, you know, another thing like with, um, with narcissists, like I, I think, you know, my opinion is, is that, you know, they're really not, I, I don't think narcissists really, the, the type that are religious, I don't really believe that they, I don't think they really believe in God. That's my opinion. I think that it's, I think religion is like their subterfuge. It's like they actually deify, deify themselves. Like they're, in their minds, they are God, right? Their ego is God. They believe that they are the be all and end all. Like they are right. Remember, it's all about they must be right. So I think their true, my guess is their true heart isn't, isn't with a belief in God. Um, they absolutely love control so they can use some of the tenets of particular religions um, to sort of gain this control. Like some religions talk about, you know, submission and authority and obedience, you know, sometimes particularly with like the man over the woman and they can use these, you know, um, some of these teachings, uh, you know, for their, to justify their control. Remember, they're all about control. Um, and then, you know, um, it's really interesting because somebody pointed out that um, they're like one of the 10 commandments is thou shalt have no other God before me. And that actually for narcissists, um, they're, most of them are breaking those commandments because their ego is God to them. So they put their ego before God, before any idea of God. Uh, as well as breaking many of the other Ten Commandments. Um, but uh, also, you know, they really use it. They tend to, these types of narcissists, and again, not all narcissists are like this. Um, the narcissist that I was with was um, more agnostic or atheist, didn't use religion to control, actually um, had uh, was condescending in the belief of sort of science rules all. And I, I had spiritual beliefs, but I felt that I had to kind of keep those under the wraps because I didn't feel like it was a um, an open forum for me to be free to practice my spirituality. So I sort of, um, you know, kept it on the down low as not to offend the narcissist um, and his sort of agnost agnosticism or borderline atheism. So um, not again, like they're not all they're definitely not all religious, but um, a lot of them will use it to bolster themselves. So because it makes them feel better than others. So they get to put themselves up here, everyone else is down here. And you know, my, my belief about God and about um, religion and spirituality is um, that we are all kids, we are all children of God, like all seven billion of us, and um, that nobody is better than anyone else. Like we are a world family, and you know, none of us have the right to um, objectify other human beings or to turn them into things, like we did with, uh, you know, the with, like the Nazis did with the Jews in World War II, or like. Um, you know, this is controversial for me to say, but what we do w with pornography, where we have objectified humans, we've turned them into things. Like anytime we are turning human beings into things, like it's, it's not okay. So this idea that, you know, one class of people or one group of people is better than another, I just completely disagree with that. 
But narcissists, again, they think that they're better than others. Their whole stick, their whole thing is that they are superior and you are inferior. So if they can use religion to come across as this holier than thou, good as gold, you know, um, saint-like, um, amazing person, then they get to put themselves above everyone else, right? And this is one thing that you may notice, and I noticed this a lot with the narcissists that I was with, um, Sometimes if something is too good to be true, then it probably is too good to be true, right? So if you're dealing with somebody who acts like they are just, I mean, a saint, that they they practically, you know, like I said, they're practically levitating, like they have like a golden halo around their head and they are just, they're better than the average person. Like they're so good, they're good as gold, like they're just, they're almost saint-like. They, they have white flowy robes. I mean, I'm exaggerating here, but if you're with somebody like that, you know, that seems like too good to be true, like they're just so perfect and everybody else is just, you know, uh, you know, a minion in their, you know, um, pedestrian uh, humanity. Like if somebody is like that, that is a red flag. Anyone that's presenting themselves as just like this image of perfection, I now am very... Um, you know, I don't know, I have a real aversion to that these days. Now when I meet somebody, it's like, I appreciate their humanity. I really appreciate when people are able to be like open and honest about like what their flaws are. Um, I This takes me back to um, something interesting. I know I'm sort of digressing here, but um, when I first met the person, the narcissist, or I believe it was a narcissist that I was with, um, we were in a group of people and one of the people, one of the new friends asked him, is there, you seem so perfect. Is there anything wrong with you? Like what's wrong with you? You just seem so perfect. And I remember what that narcissist, what that person answered with is they said, my mother has been married three times. So in response to, is there anything wrong with you, right? With you, his response was about his mother. So he didn't say, oh yeah, there's something wrong with me. You know, sometimes I, uh, you know, like to pick my nose or yeah, I'm, I'm not perfect. I got some flaws. Like a normal person, like who's okay with having some flaws, who doesn't need to be perfect. Like that's what they would say. But it's very interesting that the person that I was with uh, pointed out flaws in his mother as what was wrong with him. And that, you know, when I, it didn't, it didn't occur to me at the time like to be that big of a deal, but when I look back, I'm like, wow, that was a red flag. Um, so anytime somebody's unable to tell you like what is wrong with them, like what are their flaws? Man, we are all flawed. We are all human beings. We all have problems. You gotta be able to, 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 to talk about what they are. And if you're dealing with somebody who's religious, who acts as if they are just they never sin. They're just absolutely perfect. Like they're, they're just, you know, they're just saints. That is something to really look at. And if they're acting holier than thou, like they're better than everyone. I mean, it's my understanding that, standing that Jesus, um, I think washed the feet of a prostitute. If I remember the story, right, I could be getting it wrong, but like, uh, you know, Jesus didn't think he, he didn't put himself above everyone. He loved people and like was very egalitarian. That is my understanding anyway. Um, so they will also often use religion. They'll hide behind religion. They'll use it as their mask. So again, that analogy with like the Catholic priest, it's using this mask of um, perfection, altruism, priesthood, and behind it is, you know, a wolf in sheep's clothing and a predator towards children. Um, and again, not all Catholic priests or pedophiles let me just qualify that um, and then remember there for narcissists their drug of choice is adoration and attention right and with the coverts they're very sneaky about that and sometimes they can get the adoration and attention by glomming on to somebody else who has um, who's sort of a, a bright light who shines who gets a lot of adoration and attention and they can get it like vicariously through the person they've sort of latched onto but in the case of sort of the religious narcissist, like this is a person that's standing up to be, you know, oh, the saint-like person, and they're getting, you know, all this adoration and attention for being like such a good, holy, you know, precious darling of a person. So they're getting their drug of choice, 
they're getting it filled by people like giving them, you know, all of this um, attention. And, you know, sometimes you'll see with these types of narcissists, like they can be like the pillars of society. They can come across as like just the good as gold pillars of society. And man, you've all heard the stories of, you know, somebody who's coming across as this, you know, amazing religious person and they're just so amazing. And then underneath it, you know, they're beating their wives or they're abusing their children. And I am, again, I'm not saying that all religious people or all Christians or all Catholics have these issues. I don't think the problem is religion in any way. I actually think it's the ego and placing their their ego above God and above other human beings. Um, so again, you know, a lot of times these they may, you know, with these types of narcissists, they may be using it to control their spouse. They may be using even some of the like biblical teachings and and twisting them and using them um, as a as a tool to manipulate um, their victims or their partner or their spouse using it for control or to, to manipulate. So anytime that you're, you know, dealing with somebody like this, I mean, this is, you know, this is a possibility. And I know some of you have probably been with religious narcissists where they've used religion to try to control you, dominate, um, keep, you know, keep the power over you, make you be obedient. And if so, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I guess my message to you would be, my opinion is that's not God. That's not, God is love. And my, and my opinion is that has nothing to do with God. That's man taking, um, you know, re using religion to control and abuse. And it's, it's like, particularly troublesome to me that uh, people would use something that's meant to be um, helpful and holy and to help people and they would use it in such an egregious and evil way. Um, but I hope this um, helped you guys with uh, somebody asked for this question and um, I, I didn't have a lot of personal experience with this one so I did my best to do some research and to try to understand it from a th sort of third party perspective. So I um, hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope you're staying healthy. I hope you're doing a lot of radical self-care. I hope you're, you know, getting some therapy if you can, reading some um, books to help you heal from this type of abuse. Um, I hope that you're, you know, doing exercise, drinking eight glasses of water, getting plenty of rest. Um, you know, I know we're all in a state of isolation right now. I hope you're reaching out to people. There are support groups, and I highly recommend going to Codependence Anonymous. There's a lot of Zoom meetings for CODA that I think might be very helpful for you if you can identify with um, being a codependent. And even if you don't, the primary purpose of CODA is to have healthy and loving relationships. So with that primary purpose in mind, whether you identify as a codependent or not, these meetings might be very helpful for you to find sort of like-minded individuals who are trying to you know, heal their, their, their childhood wounding and they are trying to learn healthy boundaries for themselves and they are trying to learn how to have open, authentic, honest, loving relationships with other human beings and to avoid toxic uh, relationships with manipulators, psychopaths, sociopaths, narcissists, active addicts, any of those people on that spectrum that are toxic. So uh, I find that a lot of people in CODA are trying to get out of or heal from or stay away from these sorts of toxic people by learning very healthy boundaries, self-love and self-care. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.